Hi, I'm SJ, Executive Commissioner for the CCWHA, the Central Collegiate Women's Hockey Association, the biggest and best when it comes to women's hockey in North America, an affiliate of the ACHA. Today is November 3rd, moving along with the season here. Uh, we've had a lot of games played over the past week, uh, some Halloween celebrations. Hopefully you saw some funny pictures online on our social media. And uh, we're going to jump right in here, get to the scores from last week. Division One women's hockey. We had an, a rare Thursday game played between Indiana Tech and Minot State. Indiana Tech beats Minot two to one. Um, Friday, when the regular game started off, first game of the night was uh, Niagara University, who you know has been playing a lot with us lately uh, across divisionally against University of Michigan Dearborn. Dearborn shuts them out. Um, Two to zero. Great, great work there. Um, they played again on Saturday, and uh, Dearborn beats Niagara also there, three to one. Uh, Zafman scores two goals. So uh, Dearborn sweeps Niagara this past week uh, in, in the games that they had. We had Aquinas playing Grand Valley State, where uh, GBSU. Shuts out Aquinas, uh, Miss Bernard in net, Bernard in net. Uh, they play again on uh, Saturday, home and home. They switch locations, and Grand Valley beat Aquinas 8-2. to two. So uh, big goals. We had uh, Sussex, Sprott, and Scram each scoring two goals in that. Congratulations. So six out of the eight goals from three players. Big, uh, big goal scoring there. Uh, again, we had Minot State play Indiana Tech. Uh, Minot beats Indiana Tech one to zero with uh, giving giving Indiana Tech an, another loss, unfortunately. But still, Indiana Tech is in first place overall. Congratulations. We had Michigan State playing Friday night against Concordia. Uh, three to two is the win for Michigan State. They uh, switch locations, play on Saturday, and Concordia comes back and beats Michigan State six to three. So they split the series over the weekend. We had uh, Minot State play Adrian's uh, Women's Division One, and Adrian shuts Minot State out three to zero. Miss Burt with another shutout, um, stopping all the shots there. They uh, they then played <clears throat> they then played again on Sunday, um, and Miss Burt gets another shutout. So two shutouts this past weekend for Miss Burt at Adrian College. Uh, 2-0 and 3-0 uh, against Minot State. Congratulations. That's hell of an achievement. Uh, two shutouts back-to-back. We had Niagara University playing Dearborn. We discussed that. Sorry. Um, we had Lake Superior State coming through, beating up on Davenport 10-1 to on Saturday. Tanello with three goals and uh, Jarenko with two for Lake Superior State. Um, they played again on uh, Sunday at Davenport, and Lake Superior State again beats up on Davenport, wins 8-0. to zero. So uh, Lake Superior State, for the weekend, scores 18 goals to Davenport's one. We had uh, Kachuk with the shutout for Lake Superior State on Sunday, and uh, Miss Howe had four goals in one game, and Ackroyd had two. Congratulations. That's, that's fantastic. Let's look at Division II scores, box scores. Not many games for Division II this past weekend, probably because they were really planning an awesome Halloween party all weekend. You know, they kind of pushed stuff on the side. But uh, first game first game was uh, Northern Michigan against Michigan State. I know a lot of people were watching that on, on the, the social media or the TV. Uh, first game, Michigan State takes two to three to two. Michigan State wins. Um, they play again on Sunday, back to back at Michigan State, and uh, Michigan State shuts them out. So Michigan State cleans up against Northern Michigan this past weekend. Miss Binsky gets the shutout for Michigan State. Congratulations in goal, making all of the saves. Uh, we had Adrian's uh, Division Two team playing Miami on Saturday. Adrian wins two to one. Uh, excuse me, three to one. Uh, against Miami. They play again on Sunday, and Adrian beats them again. Uh, 
with a five to four score. Miss Burke on Miami had two goals. I'd like to point out, uh, but uh, overall, of course, Adrian wins the series for this past weekend. And that's all the games there were. There was a game between uh, Aurora and Maryville. However, they didn't upload their scores. And when a team does that, uh, you know, the commissioner can't report on it. So uh, note to yourselves, please upload your scores within the game. It's in our handbook that you're supposed to be doing it as well. Um, I'd also like to make a side comment on something that is important. You know, we value the safety of all our players. And although hockey is a physical, it can be aggressive sport at times. Uh, we, we do not like to see any type of roughhousing or fighting. Um, and that will be taken care of swiftly. Um, there were two teams involved in a little altercation this past weekend. It's been solved. It's been resolved. And consequences have been handed out. But from the league's perspective, Please make sure that you know the rules for the good of the sport, the fans, the parents, the student athletes, and the coaches. Thank you very much. Look forward to uh, more competitive play in the future. Now, let's move on to the games coming this week. Division One. Division One has a whole host of games this week. I mean, it's a lot. Um, we have uh, Liberty playing Adrian tonight, Friday, November 3rd at 3 p.m. That's in uh, about two hours. They're probably getting ready for that game. They play again on uh, Saturday at 7 p.m. Both of those are at uh, Arrington in uh, Adrian Land over there. We have Davenport getting on the bus, maybe getting on a plane, not really sure, taking the trip all the way out to University of Massachusetts Amherst to play them. Uh, at, uh, and, you know, an interesting thing about that. So if you're out there in Amherst, Davenport. You may want to go to uh, a great restaurant that I've been to out there. Bueno Asano. Have the Salvadoran burrito. A highly ranked burrito. Been on TV shows. It's a, it's a really neat place. Got some good food there. Also, fun fact about Amherst, you may not know. Amherst College has the tallest library of every library in North America. It's the, it's the highest. So uh, there's a fact. Hopefully, we can come in there with Davenport and uh, beat them down, so to speak. But uh, they play back-to-back -back games with them Friday and Saturday out in uh, Massachusetts land. We have Miami playing Dearborn. Um, they play them twice. They play Friday at 7 p.m. and they play uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. We have Concordia playing uh, Penn State back-to-back -back as well Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and 8.15 a.m. So going to be a late night. Get out of there at 10 o'clock. Get up. Do it all over again right after you have some coffee and uh, coffee and breakfast. Good luck to both teams there. That should be a, a really good game. Saturday, we also have Lake Superior State playing Niagara at Lake Superior State. Uh, 9 p.m., late game on Saturday. If you have nothing to do after your Done watching your favorite, uh, maybe NHL team. He clicked that game on. That should be pretty good. Uh, they play again on Sunday at 1 p.m. So not a lot of rest time there. We have uh, Liberty playing Miami on Sunday as well. And we have, uh, that's what we have. That's it for uh, for number division one. Uh, those should be some good games. Lots going on. Make sure you check our website. Follow social media. It has all the times, all the places. You show up in person or you watch it on Hockey Tech or Flow TV or uh, Live Barn, etc., etc. For W2, let's look at the schedule for that. We have, uh, looks like it's a, some type of tournament being played, Lawrence Tech. Lawrence Tech has three games. They're all in Pittsburgh against different teams this weekend. On Friday, they start against Westchester University at 8, 10 p.m. Um, then they play... Uh, the U.S. Naval Academy, one of my favorite teams personally, love the U.S. Naval Academy for personal reasons, of course. Um, they play them on Sunday at 7 a.m. Uh, they play Rowan University as well. Um, and then they play, uh, that's what they play. They play three games this weekend. So uh, they'll be in Pittsburgh. As Mr. Rogers said, I'm so proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Make me proud. Win them.
I hope you do well, LTU. Um, also, fun fact about Pittsburgh for this week. Do you know it's a city with the most bridges of any city in the United States? 446 bridges. Most of them made out of steel because Pittsburgh's also known as the Steel City. So uh, if you go to Pittsburgh, you're probably going to go over a bridge. That's the point. It's also known as Three Rivers because Three Rivers converge there. If you didn't know that. Other Friday games, we have Niagara playing Sioux College at 9 p.m. Uh, up in up in Canada. That should be a pretty good game. With the uh, time change, I guess they'll recuperate the next night. We also have Sioux College playing Northern Michigan twice this weekend, it looks like. Yes, uh, they're playing on Saturday and Sunday, 2 p.m. and 1.30 uh, p.m., both at NMU. We have Notre Dame playing Central Michigan on Saturday, 7 p.m. Good time to watch a game on a Saturday. And then they play again on Sunday at noon. We have Michigan State playing Bowling Green. Uh, that's on Saturday at 10 p.m. Probably the latest game we have this week. Uh, with the time change, don't forget, fall back. Set back an hour uh, this, uh, this Saturday night. So they'll gain an hour, and then they regroup, and they play again uh, on, uh, on Sunday at 12 noon. So those are all the games for uh, our W-2. Let's look at now the uh, divisional rankings right now. So we have Indiana Tech in our CCWHA Division I, leading with 12 points, six games played, 12 points, followed by University of Michigan, eight points in four games, Adrian, six points in four games. So they're, uh, they're coming up hot. We have Dearborn in fourth place with four points in two games, Aquinas, two points in three games, and then rounded out for the top six is Grand Valley, six points in six games. Uh, looks like penalty minutes right now, uh, Indiana Tech with the most, although Adrian is close to behind it. And uh, highest goals for Indiana Tech with 40, which is roughly double the next team in line for goals for. Goals against, the lowest goals against is Adrian with five. As you may remember, Adrian has a very hot goalie right now. So uh, congratulations on that. In Division Two, first place, congratulations, Adrian College, 12 points, eight games played. We have Central Michigan, 10 points, six games played, followed by Michigan State, 10 points, six games played. So they're tied, second, second, third. We have Sioux College, eight points in four games. So they're coming up. We have fifth place, four points, uh, six games played, Northern Michigan. And then uh, Lawrence Tech is tied with them uh, as well. And then we have Miami University technically in sixth place with uh, two points and eight games played. And it's technically because Lawrence Tech is uh, unable to compete this year, being a first-year team in the CCWHA, for uh, playoffs. But we do want to notice their accomplishments and uh, wishing them well. They're really bringing out some great hockey. Goals for who's got the most goals in Division Two so far? Sioux College with 48, so they lead the entire CCWHA uh, with the least goals allowed, goals against. Uh, I will say it is Sioux College with three. Um, that's uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Four games, three goals total. But why is this all happening? Why is this going on? John Sorry about that. I'm sometimes an important guy when my dad calls. I, I guess he wants to talk to me, but this is more important right now, so we're going to talk more about who are the superstars in the CCWHA for this week. Let's look at this. In our CCWHA Division I forward skaters, we have at Indiana Tech, the leader, Miss Green, 15 points. Averaging 1.5 points per game. Tied with her for first place is Miss White at Adrian. 15 points. 1.8 goals per game. So one could argue she's got more points per game. She's probably really first place, but it's based on total points. Uh, in, in second place, we have a tie. Three-way tie. We have Wiley, Shaw, and Sensoli. Wiley's PSU. 
Shaw is Adrian, and uh, Sensoli is Dearborn, Michigan, uh, each with 1.75 uh, points per game, according to my notes. In our Women's Division Two League, we have Miss Volente still in the lead at Northern Michigan. She has 18 points with uh, 2.25 points per game. Uh, that's If that's something you can rely on, that's fantastic. We have, for second and third place, two people from Sioux College in uh, in our women's two division. I told you they are coming up hot. We have Miss LaCours with 14 points, 3.5 points per game. And we have Miss Grolu with 13 points, 3.25 points per game. Uh, you know, that's six points per game, almost seven points per game between two people from Sioux College that can be counted on right now. That's uh, That's really something. If we look at the entire ACHA and who are the leaders, we have three of them. Three out of the top ten for the CCWHA. Congratulations. Continue to make us proud, please. We have Valente, Hiller, and Green. You heard all their names. They are point leaders, so congratulations. Uh, when we look at goalies, I changed it up a little bit. I think it makes it a little bit more fair. Um, we have some goalies that have only played one game. Uh while it's impressive that you may have had a shutout and all that, as we're playing more games here, I'm only going to start reporting on goalies that have played right now three or more games, just so people have a better flavor for who the real superstars are standing out. Um, in Division One, goaltenders who have played three or more games with the lowest goals against average, we have at Adrian, Miss Burt. She has played six games. Her goals against average is 0 .34, 0 .34. So uh, not a lot of pucks going in the net on Miss Burt. That's, uh, that's a brick wall for sure. Right behind her at Dearborn, we have Miss Borso. Four games played. She's letting half of a goal in per game. So uh, you can think of that, that every two games she's letting one goal in. Think of it that way. That's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and rounding out the top three at Indiana Tech, the number one team in the women's division, Miss Varner. Listen to this. She has played eight games, the most games played, and she's letting in less than one goal a game. She's .99. So uh, every goal she's letting in less than one goal a game. Sounds like you better shoot a lot on her and hope because she's definitely standing in front of the puck and staving it controlling rebounds. If you haven't seen her play uh, or, or watched a replay on some of the social media, I would highly in, uh, encourage you to look up any of our goalies, but Ms. Varner specifically has really been putting on a show, and uh, I know I've enjoyed it. I, I hope you guys can too. Uh, in our Division Two, we have Northern Michigan, the powerhouse team, putting, putting – uh, her in goal, Bruning in goal. Five games played, 1.82 goals per game. You can imagine that coupled with Miss Valente bringing in 2.25. You do the math right there. Uh, they're, they're ahead by half a goal a game overall. Uh, NMU, that is, if you're playing them, just based on those two players. So think about that when you're strategizing. Some pretty good strategery on how to, how to play against them. Second place, Lawrence Tech. Miss Hart, four games played, only allowing 2.25 goals per game. Congratulations. And rounding out the top three, three games played at MSU, Miss Rorick. Three games played, 2.32 goals per game. Um, so congratulations on that. That's uh, Those are our highlights for this week with players. I'd like to share with you some other awesome information that hopefully you can really gather your head around. I would encourage you to really follow our Instagram, our website, et cetera, et cetera. There will be an announcement, I believe, within this week about our CCWHA playoffs, uh, not only about where it is, when it is. I think we all know when it is, right? It's always the last week of February. So it is the 23rd, 24th, 25th this year, as usual in February. Um, but where it is, how the commissioners, as you know, I, I'm the executive commissioner. We have the divisional commissioners. We've all been working diligently to bring together a fantastic, wonderful experience. We're really stepping it up a notch this year. 
for the playoffs, for the fans, for the student athletes, for the coaches, for everybody, for the town, um, to bring in people and watch our top teams play and vie for a spot to play in the national tournament that's in St. Louis with all of the teams that make it there. Some exciting news should be happening. Also, I encourage you to, uh, to also follow all of the great good deeds that all of the teams have been engaging upon for, uh, for, for social purposes within our league uh, through their social media. Some are doing fundraising. Some are just out there helping and volunteering their time. Please support them if you can. If you have any suggestions, I'm SJ. Write me at commissioner at ccwha.net. I'm happy to have you on for an interview. Happy to listen to any comments. I'm there for you. And so are, so is.